felt like the perfect all-American family, you know, like we had the older boy, you know, and the younger girl. He was four and a half, almost five when she was born, and he was so excited. He was honestly so hands-on, and like, even though they were like far apart, you know, like they were still super close. You know, they had different school start times. You know, he was in a high school and she was in a junior high. So we'd go into his room to wake him up because he had to get up first. He wouldn't be in there. Normally your first thought is, oh, he snuck out, but no, I would go look in Brooke's room, and sure enough, there he was in Brooke's room with her. Sometimes when I was like bored, I would just like go in there, and then like the next day would be like school on Zoom because there was COVID, and then sometimes we'd stay up super late and just like play games and talk. We've always taught them to live your life. If you have the opportunity to take that adventure, take it. If we went on a vacation, we would take our kids because I wanted to show them the world. My favorite part was like going to our land in Oklahoma and riding four wheelers and like spending time in his room and going to the beach and everything. We'd be out on the boat, you know, just us four for, you know, eight, 10 hours of the day having fun out on the lake. And so that was one of them. And another one was, you know, riding up in the mountains, riding our four wheelers. When he was about three months old, I would get the baby holders that you have and I'd strap him in those and take him on rides. He, he just fell in love with it, even at the young age. He couldn't even talk, and he would kind of make a and point at it, and I said, all right, he wants to go on a ride. And once he got about four, he started asking for his own. And that's when we got bought on his very first one when he was four years old. Sunday and he was supposed to be changing his brakes. He met my father in the water shop. We have a small business um, and we have all the tools and everything up there in the warehouse. And so he's just gonna take it up there, change the brakes out, and then come back home. Um, I was gonna go with him off or two, and he said no, he wanted to go with his friends. And so I said, okay, um, he's old enough, he knows how to do it. He'll call me if he needs anything and let him go on his own. And he woke me up before he left and he told me bye and he left me. And I told him bye. And then I kind of just laid back down and um, he had called me and I missed his call. And then his, he called his dad. He did it, got everything done, gave me a phone call, and told me he was coming back to our house and um, wanted to know if I would play some Xbox with him. Told me, yeah, we will. And then got a call about five minutes later that he was in an accident. And Adam came running up the stairs and he was like on the phone and he said, we, we gotta go. And I was like, what? And he was like, Brian's hurt, we have to go. That's where we store all our ATVs up there. And so there's about 10 of them up there in our shop. And his friend, when they're getting ready to go, said, hey, let's ride one of the four-wheelers. So they were on their way out, backed up, went in there and got the four-wheelers out, uh, took them for a quick ride and an accident happened. Now our life is defined before Ryan's accident and after. And Brooke, for the first few days, was extremely emotional. And then she, she stopped showing her emotion. She would kind of steer away from that, those conversations of our, about you know what happened. We were like, we had have to help Brooke. You know, helping us is one thing, but how do we help Brooke? So we contacted the warm place. She said that like, since your brother passed away, we were gonna do this thing where you like open up and share how you are feeling and they'll like help you open up and talk about it. And then we got a phone call one day that um, 
there was an in-person spot available and would we like it? And we said, absolutely. And I just knew when we toured this place that we had, this was where we needed to be. The first few group sessions that Brooke did here at the Warren Place, she was hesitant going in there. You know, she was a little standoffish, shy, but at the end of it, when she'd come out, you would see that she was smiling. They make it to where it is fun, but you're still talking, you're still expressing, you're still learning, you're still connecting. Like we like would go outside and like we would like play and then we would play games in here with like candy or like with a dice or a ball and you have to describe how you're feeling or the question. I feel like it's helped me like open up more and talk about my feelings more. I, I don't know what I would really do without this, just on many levels, not just for her, but I mean, secretly myself, because I get to be with other women who understand. And my husband, he gets to talk to other fathers who are going through the same thing. Who knows what life would be like without this place coming here to create moments with other families that have been through the same there's just so much that's been given to us. Most families cannot afford to pay to do something like this. And the fact that it's actually doesn't cost family anything to come up here and help your whole family out, not just one person in the family, the whole family gets helped. That's a huge thing. Knowing that this is something that is available at no cost to my family um, is a gift within a gift. They're like little angels kind of on your shoulder um, who are out there that without them, I wouldn't be able to have the tools to help my family. I have to say thank you. I mean, thank you is the only word I know how to say because what I feel inside, there's no words. You can't put words to that. Thank you for all y'all's donations and helping my family.